Alright guys, let's talk about the build of this 22 5.0 DC race kit. Um, I mean, as with any of the new cars out these days, the builds usually go pretty well. Um, TLR has always had really good instruction manuals, very easy to follow. Um, lots of tips and pointers and stuff to follow along with. Um, yeah, builds usually go really well. The quality of the parts was good with this one. Um, I like the Stifazol plastics that they put in there. Um, you can really get a good bite on the screws. Um, really don't have to worry too much about um, over torquing them and stripping the threads. Um, I build all my stuff with the DeWalt um, quarter inch drive power drill. So I just turn the chuck down pretty low and it usually isn't a problem um, but with these plastics it seemed like I could turn the chuck up and get a nice snug fit and not really have to do much uh, tightening with the hand wrench afterwards to cinch them down um, so that was nice um, yeah I mean just quality of the parts instruction manual is easy to follow car went together really well I mean I didn't really have too many issues um, they do give you a extra bag just labeled hardware which has like some spare screws and stuff and it turns out that that was a good thing they put it in there uh, because I think it was the transmission uh, they gave me a wrong size screw in there so I needed a 12 mil and there was an extra 14 mil length in there which would have caused issues with the screw getting into the gears and causing drivetrain problems and stuff so at least they wised up and are sensible enough to give you the extra hardware. Um, I know I got the same bag of hardware when I had my last uh, truck kit from them, so I've been doing it for a little bit now. Um, one thing I do want to talk about, so if you go down here and it says all metric hardware. So using all metric hardware make it easy to find replacement screws, nuts, and washers and helps to limit the number two tools required in the toolbox. Okay, first of all, Horizon Hobby needs an editor to go over this stuff before they post it to the internet. But yes, it is all metric hardware, but they're still doing the same thing here on the rear C and D block. <laughs> So you've got this stupid little screw here, which is an M2 by six. So yes, it's metric. However, it's an 050 driver. So it's a standard size driver. If your goal is to, whoa, computer freaking out. There we go. If your goal is to limit the number of tools required in the toolbox, why not just make it a 1.5 millimeter head? And if, if that needs to go up to like an M2.5, why don't just machine the parts to do that? if you go up to the top, if my computer will keep up. So, yep. Tools required. 050 hex wrench. 1.5, 2, and a 2.5. You could eliminate that line there because it's literally only those two screws right here. You got one there. And then if you scroll down, yeah, you got one there. Makes no sense but whatever let's see other than that I mean build build was pleasant the new shocks are pretty good um, I did run into an issue with the rear so the fronts didn't have any problems the rears the lower shock cap to hold the seals um, if you could actually over tighten it and it would pinch the shaft and restrict movement for some reason um, so I just backed them off a little bit didn't seem to have any problems they're not leaking or anything so I don't know if it was the body itself that was machined a little off um, or if that's a constant problem with all of them or if I just got a bad batch I mean I don't know um, but they're not leaking and the X-rings in there are sealing up around the shaft and everything they're nice and smooth and all the good stuff plastic caps the uh, bleeder screw set really nice so no leaks there um, yeah the another nice thing is that on the shocks I don't know if there's a picture here so right here there's actually they um, molded them to accept a screw so your lower spring retainer actually screws on and is clamped to the rod end 
um, so to keep those from popping off um, and that little extra material there might make them a little stronger um, little details like that which make it really nice um, other than that it's it's a lot of similar stuff that they've been using since the 3.0 um, they've just been updating it with um, yeah just updating the geometry and stuff as they go um, but a lot of it's you know still the same as 3.0 was obviously there's a lay down now and geometry's changed and yada 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 but when I built my 3.0 kit a lot of it was was the same as this so they've just been pro progressing with the car um, the new rear hubs um, are nice with that machine plate there and all your adjustment in one hub instead of having to change hubs and or and or inserts or anything like that um, I actually did have a problem with the rear hub so this ball stud they give you is a really long ball stud um, and they put I believe it was out of the kit a two mil washer um, so if you actually go and you put it in that hole it just barely bubbles the bottom side of it just because it's trying to push through the plastic because it's so long just enough to put a little bubble there um, and it was actually binding the drive shaft so I had to take the drive shaft out take the ball stud out kind of shave that area very lightly um, just that little bubble that had formed just shave it off with a, my exacto knife and it seemed to solve all the problems so I don't have any binding or anything there anymore um, but yeah if you're not doing um, a lot of washers to get the height of that ball stud up uh, you might want to go to a shorter ball stud um, this is the one that came in the kit um, so you would think it would work no problem right but little details easy to easy to get around so it didn't really cause any major issues um, yeah other than that build went really well I was impressed um, it was fun to build a race car again I haven't done one in a while if you guys have been following the channel you know I haven't um, so hopefully there will be more in the future so stay tuned for more videos thanks for watching and we'll see you next time All right, so a couple things I forgot to mention. Um, I did talk about the shocks being a little bound up on the rear shocks, um, and it turns out, um, well, my solution, which I told you was just to kind of back off this lower retainer very slightly, um, and I haven't had the shocks leak or anything, and that solved the problem, but what's happening is uh, the machining and the fitment of the uh, seals and stuff um, it's compressing the o-rings and the o-rings are kind of grabbing the shaft and making it tight <laughs> say that without laughing um, so the solution that most of the guys are doing is this middle spacer here is they're slightly filing it down just to uh, relieve some of that pressure and uh, keep the keep the x-rings from pinching if you will and um, causing extra friction on the shaft Man, this one's difficult to get around. Um, <laughs> anyways, uh, yeah, that's the solution for that. I just slightly backed off the retainer. I guess we'll see long term how that that works, but uh, most guys are just filing down that spacer to create extra room. Um, and then one thing I forgot to mention. This would let me select the page here. Um, I'm on page twenty seven. So when building the transmission, um, it didn't spin 100% freely. Um, there was one spot on the rotation where it slightly bound up. Now it wasn't bound up super bad or anything. It was, it was honestly like you barely would notice it. Um, but it looks like it's, um, from what I've talked to with other guys, it looks like it has to do with these inserts and how they fit into the case. Um, and it's just causing um, slight binding on um, part of the rotation um, so some guys are filing down parts of it just to make it work right now I'm not sure exactly what they're doing to solve the problem um, but it looks like it's definitely something that TLR should address because you should have a very free spinning transmission um, you don't want any binding or anything um, now the binding that I had was very 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 limited um, so I figured that it's just, just going to work out when we run the vehicle. Um, but yeah, those are just a couple things I wanted to add on and mention in the video. So thanks for watching.